Hey guys, it's me Noah here with Integral Bricks, and this is going to be kind of an unscripted little tutorial video I thought I would make. Uh, so I just want to get all my thoughts out there, but basically I want this video to be kind of like a beginner's guide to how you can uh, get to the level that a lot of people want to be at with their LEGO Star Wars or LEGO whatever um, YouTube channel or just the hobby in general. Um, now I've heard from a lot of people during live streams and in person that they want to know how you can grow your LEGO collection because uh, kind of a, a rumor is that you know the larger the collection you have the better the builder you can be which is partially true because obviously if you have the parts uh, you know you can build things that someone else might not be able to build just due to parts but I found that that's not always the case um, let's say like a really good builder doesn't need that many parts to make something truly amazing but there are definitely lots and lots of ways to improve your building strategy and also grow your Lego collection which is also important I'm not gonna downplay the size of a Lego collection is definitely important especially if you want to make larger mocks um, the first thing I want to say is that it's definitely not a quick process um, I know a lot of people are kind of blindsided by the fact that they go on YouTube and they see uh, these semi-large LEGO YouTubers maybe unboxing stuff or building these gigantic mocks and they're you know these are, these are quantities that um, your average LEGO consumer is not used to and they might be thinking oh am I doing something wrong like why have I never built LEGO in such a quantity I mean these quantities that people are out here unboxing you know uh, battle packs and hauls and stuff it's, it's making UCS LEGO sets look like you know battle pack size um, and the truth is these people have been saving up for a long time or they're doing other methods in order to get to that point point. Um, and we can kind of talk about those in a little bit but the point is that yeah it takes a long time and no you're not doing something wrong if you're not building Lego on that scale or if you're not used to it but uh, just know that there's a lot behind the scenes to those scales uh, and you, you can learn how to do it and that's hopefully what this video will help you with uh, so the first thing is when you see people with large Lego minifigure collections, obviously they've kind of been built up over the years. Um, especially for Star Wars, battle packs have definitely helped grow the collections over time. Uh, but what a lot of people will do is they'll buy mini, uh, not minifigures, they'll buy uh, battle packs on sale, which is another thing I want to talk about uh, because you really should never be buying Lego sets at retail price unless you have an immediate need for that set in a mock or something because Lego sets, even though Lego is a very popular brand and it's kind of a rumor that, oh, Lego is not going to go on sale, uh, that's just wrong. It will go on sale. Uh, just recently we had May the 4th, which is, you know, Star Wars Day, and at the Lego store, Star Wars sets were 20% off basically everything except for the very, very brand new sets. So that's the other thing. You need to choose when you're buying sets. So let's say, like, there's a set that you really want, but you don't have an immediate need for it. You think in your head, oh, I might want to put, say, this X-Wing in a future mock that I'm going to be working on. Uh, but you don't exactly know when you're going to start that mock or when you're going to want the mock to be finished. But you know that May the 4th will be coming up and during the May the 4th there's you know double VIP, uh, you get a bonus set, you got a poster this year, um, and what else? And the sets were on sale. So just that alone means that you should be picking the right time to buy sets. So I think that's very important. And there are other times besides May the 4th and there are other stores besides the Lego store. Uh, here in the United States, we have Walmart and Target are the other two big ones. Uh, there's no longer really Toys R Us, but that's because um, their prices were pretty high and the store kind of went out of business, but that's a separate issue. Uh, Walmart and Target, you can always find sales on Lego sets. Now let's say you just want to increase your collection size of LEGO so that you can maybe in the future make large mocks, but you don't have an exact idea of what you want to build in the, uh, the current moment, which is fine. I'm always on the lookout for you know parts to add to my collection because you never know what you're going to want to build next. Um, I think in that case, you really just need to be looking for the cheapest deal possible on LEGO. And that can kind of be its own video, I guess, but uh, from you know, a very high level overview, the cheapest deals on LEGOs available will be BrickLink if you're looking for specific parts, but that's not really what we're talking about here. Um, garage sales are obviously number one, and that's that. it should be self-explanatory because it's people who have 
whatever quantity they have, but they're just trying to get rid of it. People at garage sales are not trying to make like huge profits. They're trying to clean out their house and their garage. That's the point of them. Um, I have found hundreds of dollars worth of sealed Lego sets at garage sales sold by kids' parents whose kids are no longer into the hobby uh, for like $5. And I mean, every year I kind of am lucky because in my area there's a big neighborhood that has a yearly neighborhood uh, neighborhood scale garage sale. So I always go to that, I get up early, make sure I can get the Legos before everyone else gets to them, but I would really recommend looking at garage sales if you just feel like you need to grow your collection, uh, but you don't have an immediate need for anything in a mock. Now if you do have an immediate need for something in a mock, then Bricklink is obviously the best website to go to. Um, I remember when I first learned about Bricklink, I wasn't too keen on just ordering from, uh, you know, it, it felt to me like random people's websites. But uh, after using it for several years, I found that the companies on Bricklink and the people who own Bricklink shops are very professional and I've really never had any issues. Uh, and you can find literally any part under the sun there, so it's a great website for that. Um, but let's say that you now, you've kind of gotten the uh, bricks you wanted from Bricklink and garage sales and your collection is decent size. Um, and you want to start building mocks. And I really only have experience with Star Wars mocks, so I guess I'll probably just talk about that. Um, but I've said this also in the past, and it's that if you really want to build a mock and you want it to be, you know, you're going to do it publicly, like maybe on a YouTube channel or Flickr or Instagram, you want to show people your mock, um, I think the best thing to do is make the mock as unique as possible. And that's very difficult to do in the Star Wars LEGO community because it's a big community and it's been going on for a long time. There's not too many scenes from the movies and video games and shows that haven't been recreated to a near perfect degree in LEGO, but there are some. And I think that starting with those is the best way to get yourself noticed. Um, you can communicate with other, you know, new-ish LEGO builders or people who are larger, like more popular than you at the moment. Uh, and you know, everybody in this community is very nice. You'll be able to find helpful advice from literally anyone you talk to. Uh, but there's always tips to be learned and this community is really, you never can uh, master this craft. There's always stuff to be learned from the LEGO Star Wars community. So I think that's very important that you always uh, try and learn and you try and be as unique and create your own style as early as possible. And once you have your idea and once you're starting to build sets, uh, it's pretty important that you stay consistent with it, whether or not you're making videos uh, or just posting on Instagram or Flickr. Just kind of stay on top of it because if you start developing a, you know, a group of people who like your work, some people following what you do, uh, then you don't want to lose them by not posting regularly and then they forget about you. So that's something you really have to stay on top of, especially in the beginning, because once you have a certain growth rate, um, that rate tends to multiply and that's just how the world works. Um, those who are very, you know, popular also become more popular a lot easier. It's not exactly fair, but it's how it works. Uh, so the beginning is always the hardest. So if you just stay determined and keep uploading and keep building, you will, you should be fine. Um, that's probably the best advice I can give you for growing your uh, social media presence of Lego. Uh, but as long as you're having fun with it and you're, you're, you know, you're expanding as you go, I really don't think there should be any problems. And uh, that's probably basically it for this. I mean, I don't have too many other tips. I mean, a lot of this is just kind of stuff you learn as you go. And like I said earlier, with this hobby, you really are always learning. Um, you never really can master the building craft or Lego's one of the only collections where you can really never have enough. Like, you can never have enough parts. Like, it may look like this thing is full, but, you know, it'll be empty after, you know, one mock. So, uh, you always can improve, and there's always more to do, but that's the fun of it. So, if you guys like this little video on, like, kind of a how-to beginner's guide type thing, and you want to see more of it, definitely let me know by liking the video and subscribing, as well as telling me in the comment section, because I want to try something new out. Uh, and I feel like a beginner's guide to the Lego hobby is something not, that I haven't seen too many times in the past. Uh, but I feel like it's kind of demanded because I've gotten, of all the questions that I've gotten, 
uh, these are the most common. Like, how can I grow my collection? How can I start building large mocks? How much do they cost? And, you know, those are hard questions to answer, but uh, I think that's kind of exactly why it would be helpful to have videos like this. So um, thank you guys for watching. There's plenty of building coming up soon and more tips from me. So if you like that, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.